normal. Uh, let, it's my great pleasure um, to introduce uh, Professor Kok Kai Wai. Yeah, just call Professor me Kai Wai. Kai Wai, yeah. And uh, he has received this Bachelor of Engineering and a Master from Chinese U, Department of Automation and the Computer Editor uh, Engineering. That's a department produced uh, Sangtang, the owner of Sangtang, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, Chen, and they are quite uh, known uh, in the area. Then he obtained his PhD from the also well-known center in Imperial College, famous for its uh, for surgical robotic work. Yeah. And uh, then before he come to Hong Kong U in 1914, uh, sorry, 214, and uh, he was awarded a Culture Foundation Fellowship that was uh, co-supervised by an international team from University of Georgia, Bryan and Woman Hospital and Harvard Medical School. His research interest is focused on surgical robots and uh, that's an important uh, area in Hong Kong as well. And uh, he's current associate professor at the Department of Mechanical Engineering at Hong Kong U. He has co-authored over 140 res uh, research journal articles and uh, with 80 clinic fellows and 150 scientists and engineers as his collaborators. That's a very impressive number, large number. And uh, he has uh, received over 10 awards in international conference and journals. And the uh, most uh, noticeable one is the ICA and I IROS award. These are the famous one in, in the field. And uh, he also awarded uh, the Outstanding Young Research Award, Hong Kong Young, uh, Young Innovator, Innovator Award in two years ago, and uh, Hong Kong U Research Output Prize last term, right? So without further ado, maybe the floor is yours. We will listen to your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, thanks. Uh, it's my pleasure to be invited by Professor Tao uh, to this seminar, uh, and also for thanks for very kind introduction of mine. Uh, so today's uh, it's a more like a multidisciplinary um, communication amongst other fields. I'm a roboticist, uh, trained as a roboticist, and hopefully uh, some content also re related to the wearable electronics. Uh, although I'm I'm in mechanical engineering right now, uh, my PhD my PhD training is mostly in the computer science. So uh, I try because we are developed. Uh, many systems, so that's why we need um, to interdisciplinary knowledge to to implement the system. So uh, today, is, I I like to introduce this project uh, regarding the soft robot and how soft robot will potentially apply it in the uh, surgery procedure intervention, and then also mostly important uh, from my research perspective, I try to uh, elaborate some of the a uh, very critical challenge uh, in terms of soft sensing and soft robotics. So if I just a background introductions of my research group at uh, HKU, if you search uh, IRIS and HKU in Google, uh, you will find that website. And then basically this is five major area uh, I'm working on, but um, today I will focus on the on the left hand side of the four, on the left hand side, the right hand side because of control and intelligence system involve a lot of mathematics. And I, I was born in a control automation uh, department, and that's why uh, this is a fundamental work. Uh, that's why every time I pop up pop up this slide and I try to emphasize a theoretical fundamental uh, 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 things is very important, and that that is the fundamental core part drive me to make a lot of. Uh, uh, research work can be translatable. So uh, if I like to introduce uh, surgical robotics, uh, the, the try to introduce some historical milestone in surgical robotics, uh, I need to introduce this professor. He is the one first inventor uh, developed the world first uh, robot for orthopedics, mostly 
for a totally replacement, totally replacement procedure. Uh, he was the one uh, at Imperial College developed the world first robot called uh, Polbot. That was the time in 1991, uh, successfully removed the human tissue, human tissue uh, in, in the operating theaters. And later on, he translated his uh, control concept, haptic feedback control concept. Uh, and then uh, the port that is at the very beginning is Ocobot and then later on acquired by Mako and Mako acquired by the uh, uh, Stryker uh, that as a very giant healthcare uh, company for surgical robotics. So uh, I was lucky uh, before his retirement, uh, he, he, he was my PhD examiner. So basically this is the robot introduced a very um, simple concept. Uh, for example, if you like to drill, make a drill and try to remove the tissue on the bone, accuracy is always the prior first priority, accuracy. So. Uh, the idea is that uh, my, my daughter is around five years old, six years old. Uh, every time I, I, I want to teach him how to draw a straight line on the paper, this is a typical, uh, difficult task. Somehow I need to hold his hand to draw a Chinese calligraphy or, or Chinese writing on the paper. Uh, but I ju just use a straight line as an example. If you have a ruler, physical guidance, physical, sub uh, uh, physical method to guide him to draw the straight line on the paper, this is much more easy to relieve the cognitive burden in her brain. Similar idea, uh, we, we, we don't need the robot to be too autonomous. We just need the robot to have a very collaborative uh, interaction with humans. So the idea is that if you want to do a very accurate, accurate uh, uh, hole or make a very straight plane, 2D, 3D plane cut on the bone. The actual bone of the patient need to register uh, with, the, with, the, with the CT images and then let the system to guide the robot and the robot to guide you, the surgeon's hand to make a straight line. So when the, when the surgeons try to make a straight line but they, 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 they will make a mistake to beyond the, the surgical margin, the robot will generate a kind of haptic interaction, the force, resistant force to guide the surgeons, uh, uh, try to check the surgeon back to the, on the right track. So this is a sim similar idea, which we, we are using the robot acting as a ruler, generate a virtual ruler to, to make a cut on the tissue. So this is a, a, a concept, very important concept for orthopedics robot. But surgery involved not just orthopedics, uh, also involves soft tissue. So that's why uh, more people will, will, will realize this robot, this is the Da Vinci robot. Uh, that's why robotic surgery is no longer a futuristic uh, animations. Uh, we all, since 2007, even in Hong Kong, we, uh, uh, we have more than 1,000, 10,000 cases done by ro robot. But the idea is that human, still need to keep a very good control, full control on the robot. Somehow the control concept is called master-slave control concept, but uh, right now in our robotics company, uh, community, we, we don't want to use these terms. Uh, it will, it will uh, revoke a lot of uh, slavery history in Western side. So that's why they now so-called a leader follower control concept. So the idea at that time is, is selling the robot to the surgeons. We are not taking place of your job, but we are just having you to remotely control the robot in a better motion mapping, in a more appropriate motion mappings. So this is a very uh, famous Da Vinci robot platform already applied in the surgical robotics, uh, surgical routine in hospital, but mostly applied for laparoscopy. What does it mean uh, laparoscopy? Uh, here is an example laparoscopy in manual version, like uh, having a chopstick passing through your belly skin and making a keyhole. And all the motion need to follow that pivot point we call Falcom effect. What does it mean? It means the, it makes the whole procedure further complicated. And whatever you move it to the left and right, the end effect of the instrument will go reverse directions. So, 
if you if the surgeons want to perform a kind of more complicated procedure like suturing, he need a lot of training. But while we robotize the entire motion manipulation, the advantage is that the surgeons need to just focus at the end effect, the tip, the instrument tip. All the motion from the joystick to the motion tip, the direction is totally consistent. They are no longer reversed. The mapping, the, the motion mapping can be fine-tuned by the user. So from small, from big motion to small motion inside the human bodies. So this is a kind of concept, and uh, one of the very good advantage making the laparoscopic robotics very popular. Uh, and then they, they trust the system very much. And even right now, uh, it become a very regular routine in, in, in operate, operating theater. So uh, my interest, uh, I, I still have a very strong belief robot can emerge in more different kind of procedure. So a uh, previous one, I introduced all kind of procedure they are relying on the camera, like I, but a lot of hidden procedure that would be properly lead a more advanced eyes. That is an, an other imaging modality can see through the entire body. Right now, the most versatile imaging modality, which is called MRI, which is the best imaging modality can, can, can have a very strong contrast on soft tissue. You can distinguish all kinds of soft tissue from the bone and even can observe the heat map temperature. And even when you apply the ultrasound acoustic force, the micro scale displacement can also observe the by, uh, uh, MRI. And even you can see the temporal resolution is, is very good. Uh, that could be uh, up to a 35 millisecond on a 2D plane. So that, that, that means that we can monitor, monitor something and even can measure the blood flow, pulsatile blood flow inside the body, quantify the blood flow using that kind of fast MR image. But the problem is that when you search a keyword, MRI, accident in Google, you will typically see that kind of picture, having, having that donut sucking the, the metal, hospital pet bed, this is a wheelchair of an elderly. Um, this is a very strong metal, 1.5T, Tesla. This is just a 1.5 Tesla scanner. We have a 1.5T and then 3T scanner typically in, in hospital. That is already enough to suck in a very heavy wheelchair to the donor. So the idea is that if we want to take use of these eyes, MR eyes, to see through the body and then make all the procedure more robotics, we need to develop a non for magnetics robot. That means the robot can't be directly driven by motor, EM motor. Every motor involves a magnet, as you know, involves iron, magnet, ferro magnetics. So this is a forbidden material go, going into the MI room. So that's why it's a very challenging to develop robot in MRI. So this is a, one of the uh, very typical example why we did MRI is that we push, we push a needle to a deep brain region area and try to release a laser heat energy to burn out a particular part to destroy the tumor in the deep brain regions. MRI is a very good modality. You can even see the heat diffusion and then understand and monitor the evolution in a very good real-time manner. So that's why uh, many, for long ago, after even the invention of MRI, many people try to Think about the challenges to robotize that kind of procedure and make the procedure compatible within the MR environment. So uh, my groups uh, focus on the system. Uh, this is the general setting of the robotics, uh, MI guided robotics uh, system. So we have a patient inside of the donut. Suppose we have a manipulation mounted on the patient or mounted on the MRI tables and we have the signal trans transfer through a waveguide. So that is a connection in between the control room and scanner room. 
is a, is a very small tunnel in diameter of around 500 millimeters, 50 cm centimeters. And, and, and then the, the, the operator can remotely control the robot and then also can monitor the image and see through the temperature. This is the very ideal scenario or ideal setting of the MRI robotic system. Um, but we, we are working very hard in my groups and we are the, one of the very few research group try to go through, explore every single components from the mechanical design to actuation system, actuator, and also the sensor, uh, positional tracking, we call it GPS. We did a pos positional tracking inside the MRI. So if we have these three components, we can have a lot of robot development uh, to, to, to carry out uh, under this framework. So uh, uh, this is the idea. We, we use one of the very uh, killer, we call it a killer application, which is about the deep brain stimulation, DBS. The procedure is very simple, much more simple than orthopedics, laparoscopy, they are involving suturing, ovulation. This procedure is just pushing the needle to the deep brain regions and it released the electrical si signal, try to interrupt the abnormal electrical signal originate from the brain. So the, in terms of the surgical procedure, here is, is, is the one you can see. But if you observe the procedure, this is the most gruesome one I can observe, even more than orthopedics. I, I have witnessed a lot of uh, very complicated procedure, but this is the one I, I, I feel very scary because the, world, the, the problem is that complications. The patient is not under the GA, general anesthesia. The whole body, just part of it got sedated. And then this procedure, the surgeons want to keep monitoring the effect of the electrical stimulation. That's why if the patient can pay can play the musical instrument, they will suggest the patient to, to perform the instrument manipulation time by time. The entire procedure for one needle on right hand side is already spent you six hours. Mostly, usually the needle has to put either right hand side and two, uh, left hand side, two side. It's a whole day procedure, very exhaustive one. So uh, this is the idea, but the problem why we lead, we lead this, can it be the GA? Can, it, can, can the patient be totally sedated, general anesthesia to, 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 to minimize the complication? Yes, the problem is yes, but we need a very accurate localization of the tube time by time to guarantee the tip is finally target at the right little organs. The target is within the, just a little piece of rice in the, in the brain. Uh, somehow it's called subalamic nucleus. It's a very small organ into the brain. We have that little, little, little pinpoint, pinpoint that particular part and then emit the regular electrical signal to influence the, the motor disorder, to correct the motor disorder. So this is the idea why we need a MRI system so that we, like, we can keep that procedure simple by GA, by general anesthesia. And then so that the, the needle would not be no longer step-by-step step pushing inside the brain, just one stroke calculation by the MR image and then target at the, at the, at the right place. So uh, that's why at that time uh, in 2018, uh, we, we developed a system. Uh, Ji-Yan is my first PhD. Uh, she's right now working as a, a faculty member at UCL. And then she was the one who uh, helped me to develop the, the, the conceptual prototype at that time. We make the things compatible, driven by water, driven by hydraulics power to drive the needle in the correct angle. And then let the surgeons to punch and even the, 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 the instructions of the, the needles here is driven by, by MR compatible actuator. So, uh, and, and also again, we have to keep track, keep tracking the needles uh, position 
That's why we also develop a sensor, which is a wireless sensor uh, integrated at the little guide so that we can have a very white spot in the MRI image sequence. Sequence. If we don't use the MRI image sequence, which is a very strong signal in 3D, in 2D, in 1D projections, so that we have a very good real-time feedback of the 3D coordinate of that marker point. So this is another uh, invention, uh, uh, play a very critical role, well differentiated from other robotic systems, which is because of that wireless marker. So uh, it, it's not a very complicated uh, thing uh, because of in, uh, uh, let's say Dr. Zhong, you know a lot of uh, microfabrication on the circuit. This is actually just a resident first circuit. Uh, it's a resonant circuit that can resonant the, the MRI lemma frequency. We are using the flexible PCB approach to, to having multiple layer to make that circuit able to resonant and pinpoint a very narrow bandwidth of frequency so that we can have the MRI uh, to, to detect that marker. So the low house is mostly on not just the the fabrication is also on how we can tune the MRI sequence to recognize that spot in real time. Um, so this is the uh, conceptual idea, uh, uh, how we can uh, uh, understand the, having the, just a three marker, we know the orientation, position, six degree of freedoms of that, uh, 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 60 dimension of that uh, 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 little guide. Um, this is also how we simplify the procedure. If we can take use of MRI, we no longer trial and error to asking this question and then even not necessarily have a verbal interaction with the patient. That means the patient can sleep well and then after finish the procedure, he or she can, can awake without notice anything. So right now, this is a situation we have to, the, the clinician have to, has to monitor very well with the uh, patient and then they want to know whether the needle is really having a mistake on the, on the instruction. So with MRI, we can just skip that complicated decision-making and then strict, strictly believe the MRI image. So this is a kind of uh, cataphoric head uh, 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 procedure we, we try to, uh, analyze the, the, the uh, precision. So now going back to the, to the real topics about uh, soft robotics today, I, I guess uh, uh, many people have a very good attention on this paper published in Science in 2011. Uh, that may be a, another paper 2012, but this is a previous one in PNAS. Uh, this paper, uh, is a very shocking paper to robotics, as honestly. Uh, why? I, I, I learned robotics, uh, I still remember the first nature uh, delivered by Professor Chu Yangsheng. He tried to ask a very tough question to the whole class and saying, how you can distinguish robot from washing machine at your home? Washing machine, everyone got washing machine, right? How to distinguish robot from that machine. And why the washing machine is not robot? And this is a very tough question. We, we, we try to think, and it gives us a hint how we can define robot. Three aspects. One is the attraction, dedicated attraction. If the species can provide a very dedicated attraction, they may probably a robot. Secondly, the robot should contain incorporate with sensor. That means they have a sensory channel. They know they try to, uh, the robot itself can, can have a strong measurement on the environment. This is the second thing. The third thing is finally intelligence. So does it involve any intelligent, logical reductions, log uh, uh, decision-making by the robot? Looking at this, no. Not at all, no sensor, no very delicate control of motion, no cold through feedback, which is just an open loop feedback. Finally, where is the intelligence? If it doesn't have any sensor to, to, to help him to make decision. This is just a balloon to us. And then this is a very shocking 
as a robotics, how they so-called robot and publish in a very, very high impact journal. And, and then uh, honestly, a, a lot of robotics don't, doesn't know why, but looking in the positive way, if this is the trend, how we can robotize it in a better way, closer to the robot, how we can incorporate sensor to this balloon and how we can perform closed loop control with the sensing feedback and then how we apply incorporate intelligence. So after this, post, honestly, the paper in science, they are no longer focused on soft robot. They are mostly talk about the uh, uh, camouflage. This is the science exactly after uh, the PNAS. And then they try to emphasize the focus is that how they inject the chemical material, chemical fluid to, to perform that camouflage. I'm not in that area. I can't justify whether this is a very strong uh, invention or not. But, but this series of paper have a very high impact to our mentality, robotics uh, mentality. Um, but if I say it, is it the first one? No, definitely not. Tracing back to the ICRA 1991, we have the first robot finger developed by Japanese in a very humble manner. They are co-over with a Toshiba, but Toshiba never confessed this is their invention because one of the just one of the co-over at that time after the, his graduation, he go to Toshiba. That's why he has an affiliation from the company. At that time, they don't feel this is a good stuff. Just the fingers and do a proper job, maybe they are thinking what kind of job would be useful with, uh, by, by, by these fingers. And if I move it fast forward a bit. Um, interesting, I can't manage to fast forward. Yeah, this is a kind of task. Uh, maybe more meaningful than the than the science one. Uh, at least it's more involving the the the, the industrial task, uh, manufacturing manufacturing task. So this is the story. This is the historical milestone. And then right now, later on, uh, closer to to uh, after two thousand fifteen. People also think about how soft robot can be applied in surgery. Not necessarily surgery, can be just a diagnosis. Colonoscopy, like a normal endoscopic examination of our colonel. The, 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 the endoscope body will going through from our mouth or from the, our uh, anus uh, to check the, 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 the wall, inner wall of the, of the colonel. Um, so some people think about how we, 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 we can use soft robot concept, full different soft robotics concept. But this is not a very successful prototype, honestly. Uh, the problem is that uh, surgeons or clinicians, they're very good at controlling these fingers. Uh, they don't need soft robot to accelerate their, their procedure. And even somehow the soft stiffness of that device may be too soft they can't go through stick inside to the very, very uh, uh, sticky area because the problem is that people, many people doesn't know it. Why we have to do sustation before that examination? Because there is a very strong rigid things. We need the endoscope to create the space, create a tunnel. The tunnel is not existing at all. So the endoscope need to apply force to create the tunnel, the space, and let the endoscope moving further and further. So this is a concept uh, why we need a more rigid endoscope. But if we make it too soft or floppy, maybe they probably slow down their procedure. So uh, even me, uh, I'm a, one of the benefiter at that time. And we, uh, there's a company uh, called uh, Long Times Ago. They invest a lot of money to investigate that kind of single use soft cannot, uh, Chronoscope. So that's, that's why I, I can't publish anything related to the chronoscopy uh, application. But I use that robot as a toy to demonstrate that kind of task and try to think about, can we have this robot to, to perform more delicate manipulation 
uh, this is one of the example. Uh, the robot no longer very floppy. That could be very rigid. I can apply very high pressure, uh, air pressure into the robot more than up to six bar. What is the concept of bar? In our normal vehicle, the tie, the air pressure inside the tie, it's just around 2.5 bar. This is six bar, very strong one. And then the robot, suppose even under the open loop control system without any sensor, the robot can, can do a very high repeat, repeatability task. And every time he throwing the ping pong ball, ping pong ball, and then using the same pressure, the repeatability is very high. The hysteresis is very low. And then they can do, if we have two segments, provide sufficient redundancy of the motion, he can just uh, uh, acting as a manipulator. There's a very interesting task uh, involving local motion. I, I didn't put it here, but this was the time, um, our first step, uh, that should be earlier than uh, 2016, but we published the work in 2020. And we are humbly working out because uh, we have a very fortunate good money from the company uh, for developing the first single use uh, chronoscope. Uh, so, this is the major uh, challenge. I'd like to uh, talk about it today. Maybe you will forget all my video, uh, my name, or even my, my, my research group, but I hope you will remember this slide, which is about the challenges in soft robotics. And then I try to categorize all the challenge into that four aspects. First of all, why soft robotics, which is very difficult to control, and then how very, very difficult to measure and provide a very precise manipulation. One of the reasons is that we don't know much about the materials, which is the material involving providing a very hyper elastic deformation. And then we can't have a very accurate model of those hyper elastic material. We don't know much about the stressing behavior or even you, you know part of them, but this is a composite material no longer just involve one rubber. They will, they will involve a, a multiple polymer materials. Secondly, from the control perspective, you need a tendon, you need fluid, you need maybe probably the piezoelectric uh, 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 actuator. But even the placement of those actuator, tendon, fluid, and they will involve a very complicated force coupling inside the structure. That force coupling is underlying into the nonlinear continuum structure. This also applies the conventional robot driven by tendon. And all kind of robot on the market, on the surgical robotic market, they are tendon driven. And then secondly, uh, also the distributed load of the cables or the fluid is being pressurized, they have they will contribute a lot of nonlinear behavior. And then finally, the actuation fluid dynamic, which is also the black box uh, in terms of modeling. So I, every time uh, we develop a new robot, we will try to turn over these four challenges and we remind the teams and how we resolve that four, four aspects. But basically, uh, this is another uh, uh, research work but at the very beginnings at Brian and also second PhD here. Uh, uh, he tried to model with FEA, FE finite element analysis, which is the ultimate, I can say, which is the ultimate mechanical approach to interpret the mechanical behavior for composite material, finite element modeling. And then at that time, we are thinking how we can model it very well and then provide a very lead initial model for our control, kinematics control. And later on, we need a sensor, positional tracker, 3D tracking that pawn so as to apply a closed loop control and see whether we can do a better control on the robot and then so called make it so called robot rather than balloon. So, three chamber along the structure, three chamber along the structure, we pump into the pneumatic force, air force. And so the robot can bend in a panoramic 
directions. And then right now, if we put the sensor tracker, we know we have the feedback to do a, apply the cold loop control. And even we have the unknown external disturbance, the robot should supposed to follow the path well, even under the disturbance. This is a typical cold loop control task while the robot have sensor, but we never satisfy with this prototype because which is the, not the self-contained uh, sensor. Similar to uh, Dr. Zhong, the case, uh, the science robotics reviewer wants you to have a self-contained robot of your co coach uh, with battery, without, without teether. This is a typical review uh, comments from robotics. So that's why we don't like it. We want to develop our self-contained sensor rather than using the external checking system to, to provide the feedback. So, uh, but the problem is that uh, we, we, we like to accelerate the FEA because this is a very good model approach to understand the actuation behavior of robots. But the problem is that we can't use that FEA in at real time, in real time, which is because very complicated FEA procedure involve uh, uh, accurate material parameter input. You have to know the material very well. You have a prior knowledge of the composite material, how the robot being formed by those materials. And then FEA algorithm itself also involve a lot of complicated computations. Meshing, tessellation, if you don't have a good meshing, somehow your FEA model can't be converged. But the ultimate problem is about the computational cause. Even applying GPU, you never can achieve a real-time performance that could fulfill, fulfill the robotics cold loop control. Those challenges actually make our work giving up from FEA, which is no hope to use FEA in real time to correct the robot. So uh, we also think about the, uh, we are the earlier groups, uh, to think about the solution, applying AI, how about the reinforcement learning? We, if we have a simulation platform, a rough model, virtual environment to, to try to simulate the robot manipulation, can we also compensate with the result with reality performance? And then so that the robot can, without much training, the robot can even perform well. Uh, that was the uh, recent work, my student Yan Qi, uh, he tried to apply uh, the things onto the soft robotics. She came that that would be the first work using reinforcement learning on soft robotics. So the work finally published in IROS, uh, very humble work. But to me, I'm looking forward to a bigger direction. I, uh, as I, I'm a PI, I need, to, I need to save the whole soft robotics community because the problem is that uh, Many senior professors, they don't look good on the entire area because since 2012, we still not yet witnessed the killer application of soft robotics. Even in manufacturing, in industry, they, they don't like it, which is the problem. Precision, compliance control is good, but precision can't reach up to the certain level. For me, I'm working in surgical robotics. I'm trying to take out what is the best scenario for soft robotics? A lot of people invest in my team to make a first single use chronoscope. But the, in terms of the business, business model, we can find a lot of failure case. But in terms of research money, yes, I receive it and then take it as a low house. And then I try to develop other things for another procedure. Finally, I try to combine soft robotics advantage what is the advantage? If relative to the MRI application, the advantage is that they are rubber. They are no longer from magnetic material. They don't need motor directly driving the, motor, the, the robot. They just need air, fluid, water to drive the robot. They are totally compatible with the MRI environment. So that's why uh, we, we are doing a lot of surveys since uh, 2016, uh, we talked with a lot of surgeons, clinicians, dentists, think about what is the killer application. Uh, this is one of the conventional problems. Uh, people want to do a very precise 
cutting on the, on the tumor. That tumor is usually developed very close to the vocal regions, vocal muscle. If you make a mistake on cutting that tumor, laryngeal tumor, they will have a permanent effect on the voice, speech. And that's why we need a very accurate cutting method, which is laser. So people try to use a straight line laser and then cutting that small tumor along with a very accurate mar uh, surgical margins. This is a setting, but the problem is that the setup is very complicated. A lot of patients, they, have, they, they are in the, at the older age, they may not be able to afford this procedure because they have to make a very extreme posture. Having the laser project straightly from the outside laser gun. This is very problematic because light travel along a straight line. This is a physical property, how we can change it. Only one thing we can alter the routing, the alter the direction of the laser, which is optical fibers, optical fibers. So the idea is that if we have an MRI system, we, if we have a robot, uh, we have a a laser fiber routing the laser approaching to the laryngeal tumor. And then the light, the laser light is no longer travel along the straight line, but along the optical fiber. And then the optical fiber will emit the energy through the condomator and focus that laser spot on the tumor. That's it. But we have to alter the laser fiber. We have to alter the Condomator, what is the mechanism? We need soft robot. And then also monitor the procedure under the MRI because we want to monitor the heat. We want to monitor the surgical margins, whether this is precise or not. So this is a very early prototype. Um, uh, the robot can do a general bending insertion, two degree of freedom, three degree of freedom. And this is just a one segment for bending so that making the robot complies with our esophagus and then pushing the, the tip, the instrument tip close to the laryngeal uh, organs, laryngeal tumor. And then the idea is that and we also can apply the cold stoop control based on the laser spot. Laser spot is a very good cue because we also have a MI compatible camera in a very low resolution. Based on that camera, we would know where the laser spot, honestly, which is a visible light, but visible light doesn't burn tissue. Invisible light will burn the tissue. That's why the visible light here, is just like guidance. It's just like a feedback to the camera for the cold stroke control. So this is the idea we use soft robot, just pumping a very little liquid, 0 0.004 milliliter water to drive the very small uh, uh, soft chamber. Today, I don't have uh, a time to, to, to elaborate the mechanical mechanism here, but uh, th th that involve a lot of, uh, uh, that involve a lot of uh, small soft chamber. To, to steer, to steer the, 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 the laser gun, to steer the laser gun. So the idea is that uh, if the surgeons prescribe the path in that circle, the robot will, will travel along that path and the MRI at the same time can monitor the heat map time by time. And then we, we know how much the energy penetrates through the tissue. And then we also know before and after the ablation, whether the healthy tissue got destroyed. Okay, so this is a very uh, uh, kind of killer application with uh, a soft robot in MRI. So later on, uh, after this, we are lucky. We are lucky to find a killer application. And, and then laser spot with the camera become the sensor of the soft robot to do cold stroke control. But in many situations, we don't have camera. What we can do is self-contained uh, a sensor. Here, 
we also take use of optical fiber technology, which is called FBG, fiber bread grating. And we try to integrate one piece of fibers and then combine our reconstructed surface, receiving just a two loop, one loop here on the, on the one side, the other loop on the, on the bottom side, based on that two loop of FBG spa string data. Actually, to me, it's a string gauge, not necessary to be so complicated. A string gauge arranged in a circle, based on those string gauge data, how we can have a denser prediction of the deformation, dense deformation prediction. This is our modeling technique. Uh, this is the three gentlemen. They start this work uh, since 2019. And then we, we, we did a lot of study, how we can route the sensor, route the uh, a fiber along an A4 side, because our goal is to do a large scale deformation. And at that time, to our literature reviews, even the uh, technology is very mature in flexible electronics, and a lot, a lot of people focus on sensor. And it's still, to me, I still not yet can find a very robust or reliable large scale deformation sensor to read feedback the morphology of a, of a paper. That is an A4 size, uh, let's say this is an A4 size thin rubber. I'm thinking how to route the fibers. Uh, I'm a, not a flexible electronics people. I don't know fabrication, but my idea is that I believe AI can relax that kind of manufacturing pauses. In, in many people, in flexible electronics area, many people start to think about how they can fabricate the strain gauge, resistor, capacitor, make it very small, distribute onto the A4 side as a mesh, as a, as a 2D mesh, as a 2D array in a very dense manner, so as to measure the morphology of the entire surface. To me, I'm thinking, can we use just a limited number of string gauge? In terms of optical fiber FBG, we just use 28 FBG. That means 28 string gauge data. So later on, we do a lot of analysis why that has to be a bone shape, dark bone shape outline and for A4 size. And this is the kind of uh, demonstrations. Uh, we apply FBA as a initial model and then also apply the AI and then try to collect all the string gauge data to predict the general morphological change. So we did a lot of training in the virtual environment, in the FEA environment, and then try to uh, uh, interpolate a lot of node points and predict the morphological change. And then, so later on, we also do a lot of training on that particular sensor. This is the product having one piece of optical fiber, the layout arranged the optical fiber just in a, bone a dot bone shape along the A4 size, I can have a very good real-time performance in a large scale deformation. That deformation not involve stretching, sorry, because uh, FB, uh, fiber is a very fragile material. We can't do stretching. And this is a very stiff rubber, but the rubber sensor can provide you a very good, accurate, general deformation information. And then also, thanks to the fiber technology, the update rate, the sampling rate is very high. I, I tried to fire bullets with a DJI RoboMaster. You can see the, the reaction, the sensing sampling time is, is very fast. It's very fast. So again, uh, I need to make it clear, uh, FBG is not my technology, which is already uh, developed since 1980s, 1980s. But this is a single core technology, single core FBG. So uh, I also test it into the water because the hydraulic dynamics will probably affect the, the, the string measurement. But uh, it seems in this experiment, we, we, we didn't see any uh, uh, deviations. So, but later on, I still don't happy about FBG. Honestly, expensive. The fiber is okay, but the interrogator cost me a fortune uh, 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 for my funding. 
And also, again, similar to your science robotics reviewer comment, this is not tethering. We have to make an untether things to make it as a robot. So how to make an untether optical fiber FVG closed loop control? To me, mission impossible. Maybe for, for Professor Tao and, and also Dr. Zhong, you will have an idea, make a wireless interrogator, but not my, my, my expertise. Okay, I talked with my students. Can we make our life simpler? Don't use FVG, don't use fiber, just LED and PD. What does it mean PD? Photodiode. You know it in your secondary school. Photodiode, what does it mean? It's an RGB photodiode can measure the RGB LED light, red, green, and blue, and try to arrange some LED along that fish fin, and then have some PD, and based on the change of light transmittance, can we achieve similar things? Because I'm doing opposite things, opposite things, from flexible electronics people. They are, they are good at fabrication. I'm a, just a computer scientist. I want to making, making things simple. And so this is the uh, result. We try to use a similar approach. I demonstrate, train the model, understand the uniqueness mapping from LPD signal to the morphology. We, we, we do a lot of cos Cosmo simulation to prove one thing. I need to ask a student one thing. If this is okay, true, the research can carry on. One thing is that whether the PD signal can be unique to the morphological change. If this is the answer, we can carry on the research. Based on their hard work on the console simulation, they prove it to me. Yes, the transmittance signal, if the, the condition is that you have to arrange the LED and PD in a proper location, in a proper location. It can't be random location. So if this, this mapping uniqueness holds, we can carry on the research. This is the similar things. We use LED transmitter. The fabrication, I can't say open source because if I sold it here, many people how, know how to fabricate the sensor. Just say PDMS, they are transparent. And then the cover is the re refractive uh, painting. We try to trap the light within the PDMS, that's it. So uh, the idea is that we want to maintain the certain level of light transmittance between from the, from the LED to the PD. So this is a similar demo. Uh, okay, but going back uh, to robot, can we apply uh, something FVG or even light this is a kind of FVG closer feedback control um, and try to use FVG sensing, ship sensing morphology to combine it with camera information to do a better job on the visual surfing task, visual surfing task. Uh, this is a, 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 a area, big area in robotics, how to use the camera information to mobilize, localize, or apply the local motion of the robot. And then also we develop uh, a lot of experiment. We try to, um, okay, maybe I, I skip a bit to this more advanced FVG, multiple core. Uh, but going back to surgical robotics, it's still okay to use an expensive equipment uh, uh, because of the business model, right? So multiple core FVG, we also spend a lot of money uh, to facilitate the interrogator allow multiple core uh, uh, fibers. So one single fiber can give me a very good feedback of the 3D curvature, 3D curvature. So the, the killer application would be, would be integrate along a very thin structure that probably the, the, the catheter, this is another application for cardiac catheterization. The procedure is a kind of treatment to the heart rhythm disorder, arrhythmias, arrhythmias. So the idea is that the catheter tip has to get in touch with a chamber, the inner wall of the chamber, and try to apply the heat energy to make a scar, make a scar 
what does it mean the scar? Scar means a barrier of an abnormal electric, electrical signal. Those people suffering the heart rhythm disorder, a lot of abnormal electrical signal coming through their pulmonary veins. So they try to make a scar to block that signal so that those abnormal signal would not go through to the heart muscle, myocardial muscle. So this is a kind of treatment making scar burning tissue inside the inner wall of the chamber, heart chamber. So this is a definitely a very good killer application with MRI. Many people try to use MRI to monitor it. FBG is also compatible with MRI. That's why we make a robot try to fusion, fuse two kinds of checking information. One is my GPS of the MRI. The second sensing information is from the FBG. So uh, we, we, we did a lot of experiment, try to uh, apply that kind of uh, catheter manipulation into a, a phantom, left atrium phantom model. We even simulate the pulsator folds so that we, can, we would like to see uh, some more information. Uh, we would like to see the accurate burning. So I may not uh, detail too much about my research work, but um, my area is very, very, very tough area as a robotic, surgical roboticist. For my five year, first five year, you have prototype. Next five years, you have a good paper. And other five years, what the people, my community will expect me. They will expect me to have product. So having a surgical product operate in the operating theater, which is very challenging and, and very high cost exercise. But unfortunately, I can't skip that path. Otherwise, uh, people will, will, will think about my research way out, whether that will be done to the earth, really can be done, performed in the surgical environment. So that's why I have to come back to the bigger market area, which is no longer MRI, because the MRI, I can say the research of MRI, there's a big obstacle, not in terms of technical, not in terms of technology. You may not easy to get good access with the MRI machine. So that's why, and also the market is still under treated. That means the cost, even not for surgery, for diagnosis, examination, the cost of MRI is very high. That make the application very hesitant. That make the surgeons or clinicians very hesitant to use, to use MRI to, for, for their surgery. But for colonoscopy, is still already a routine. So that, that's why I'm thinking some other application. I have a lot of experience to resolve the soft robotics manipulation problems, fluid driven problems, and also even the tendon driven problems. This is a very typical problems, uh, like a puppet. If you want to make a puppet walking, dancing, kung fu, you need a lot of strength you need a lot of strength to manipulate the puppet. Similar to minimally invasive surgical instrument, we need a lot of tendon to control the instrument. And then the instrument may not be a, a rigid instrument. That could be a flexible routing. So that's why um, I, I spend a lot of time uh, to, to come up a recipe. And so that make that very small robot taking place in the in the operating theater. Right now, this is a spin-off company. Uh, we regularly apply this robot to an animal trial. Hopefully next year, we will have, have a first immense trial. So this is a very small robot in diameter of just 2.8 millimeter. And then two arms coming through the uh, very small uh, endoscope, rigid or even flexible. So um, providing five degree of freedoms. And this is, we are trying to fill in the gap of the market uh, this is a flexible, but also very thin and then compatible with the use of conventional endoscope. So this is a kind of um, conclusion to summarize my work in soft robotics, in surgical robotics, how we integrate two things together. And then finally, uh, this is my conclusion. I try to show you the timeline of surgical robotics. And if you say, if, if you think about, if I use the analogy of mobile phone industry, um, maybe you, many of you are too young to experience the earlier stage of development. Uh, if I look at 1980, so one, this is 
the, the mobile phone only have one function, die out, die in. And then without any address, phone address book, they cannot be rechargeable. They need battery and then very heavy. And then in, in, in Zhongwen, we call it die die, die die. And, and like a, even at my age, I, I was in the elementary school at that age. And that was very popular because we see a big gun businessman, they will have a very symbolic device that is die die. And then in our, a lot of our toys, even the water bottle, they will mimic the, the die die mobile phone as a water bottle to sell it to our primary school student for, for, for water drinking in our school. And then this is the trend. If in my class, more than half of my class may have a die die water bottle. So, but where am I? I can, I can say Da Vinci is similar to the development of 1980. If you look forward to the further development, we should have a lot of robot can have multifunction. Later on, we have gaming in, in, in mobile phone, internet access, uh, uh, note taking, and like a personal device. I, my, my strong belief is that the robot will become smaller, no longer as big as die, die. no longer just privileged to one single type of patient they can afford the procedure, not just for big guns businessmen. Also, the robot can be facilitated applied in different procedures, not just single use of like die in and die out of the mobile phone. So there's a lot of new development uh, involving soft robotics, involving a advanced material, advanced sensing fabrication in our area. So this is a kind of slide, try to encourage all the young generation to join us. Okay, thank you very much to, that's all my today presentation.